Welcome to World News. The content of the briefing includes. The true cost of net zero? Ruinously high bills, four decades. Yevgeny Prigazin's son takes over command of Wagner. Liz Truss draws huge crowds at Tory conference as she demands tax cuts and green light for fracking. Four quality signings who made an instant impact in the WSL. Celebrated Syrian author, poet and screenwriter Khaled Khalifa dies aged 59. The true cost of net zero? Ruinously high bills, four decades. Telegraph. The UK's net zero ambitions will result in a significant increase in household electricity bills, according to Neil Record, chairman of Net Zero Watch. The country's reliance on four large-scale sources of zero-carbon electricity, including nuclear, hydro, solar and wind power, will lead to soaring costs due to the shortcomings of these technologies. Record argues that the intermittent nature of wind and solar power means that gas-fired generators are still needed to fill the supply-demand gap, and the replacement of gas by electricity will require a complete upgrade of the country's transmission infrastructure. Yevgeny Prigazin's son takes over command of Wagner. Telegraph. Pavel Prigazin, the son of Yevgeny Prigazin, has taken over command of the Wagner Group and is negotiating with Moscow on returning the group's fighters to the war in Ukraine, according to military analysts. Pavel Prigazin, 25, has been in talks with the Russian National Guard to discuss the future of the mercenary group. Wagner's fighters had withdrawn from Ukraine earlier this year and have since been scattered across several countries, including Belarus, the Central African Republic, Libya, and Mali. Pavel Prigazin is reportedly the new chief of the group following the death of his father in a plane crash in August. Liz Truss draws huge crowds at Tory conference as she demands tax cuts and green light for fracking. Telegraph. Former Prime Minister Liz Truss attracted a large crowd at the Conservative Party conference, with hundreds of people queuing to hear her speak. In contrast, cabinet ministers addressed a near-empty main hall. The conference has seen a drop in ticket sales compared to previous years, but conservative officials argue that attendance has remained stable overall. Some senior figures expressed concern about the low turnout during speeches from high-profile individuals. However, it was noted that the opening day of the conference is typically the quietest. For quality signings who made an instant impact in the WSL. Telegraph. The Women's Super League. WSL, returned on Sunday with early-season debuts for many new signings. Among them was Mia Fischel, who scored on her debut for Chelsea against Everton. Manchester City's Jill Ruard also impressed, scoring on her debut against West Ham United. Manchester United's Guys da Silva Ferreira displayed skill, pace and power but did not score, while Aston Villa's goalkeeper Daphne van Domseler made several crucial saves in a match against Manchester United. Celebrated Syrian author, poet and screenwriter Khaled Khalifa dies aged 59. The Guardian. Renowned Syrian author Khaled Khalifa, known for his novels set in Aleppo during the civil war, has died at the age of 59. Khalifa's works were banned in Syria, but he gained international acclaim for his novels, which explored the history and destruction of his homeland. His novel In Praise of Hatred, set in 1980s Aleppo, was shortlisted for the International Prize for Arabic Fiction in 2008. Khalifa's final novel, No One Prayed Over Their Graves, was published in July 2023. The Ukrainians keep making the same serious tactical mistake. Telegraph. Ukraine needs to revise its military doctrine and tactics to be more effective against Russian forces, according to Colonel Tim Collins, a former British Army officer. He argues that Ukraine should adopt NATO smokescreen tactics to protect its assets and use long-range precision strike weapons, including the U.S. Army tactical missile system and F-16 fighter jets. Collins also calls for British military personnel to learn from their Ukrainian counterparts, and for the West to increase defense spending and redouble its learning to prepare for future conflicts. Rishi Sunak's Commons majority in peril as 60 Tories join Liz Truss Group. The Guardian. 60 Conservative MPs have joined Liz Truss's growth group, which could threaten the government's majority in Parliament. Truss and her supporters called for Chancellor Rishi Sunak to cut corporation tax, build 500,000 new homes, and resume fracking. Truss argued that the state had become too big, with taxes and spending too high. Another former cabinet minister, Ronald Giawardina, warned Sunak that the conservative growth group had grown to include 60 MPs, the same size as the government's majority in the Commons. Pressure is now building on Sunak and his chancellor, Jeremy Hunt, ahead of the King's speech and autumn statement in November. However, Paul Johnson of the Institute for Fiscal Studies think tank said the chance for tax cuts was very remote due to pressures on public finances and the need for increased spending on health, pensions, and social care. Marlene Martyr's memoir of Swiss punks Kleenex slash Lilliput. The Guardian. 
Marlene Martyr, guitarist for the Swiss punk band Kleenex Slash Lilliput, has released her memoir, offering insight into the band's formation and early tours. Kleenex Slash Lilliput was formed in 1978 and gained popularity for their unique sound and energetic performances. The band was known for their feminist lyrics and use of multiple languages in their songs. They were influential in the punk scene and inspired many other bands, including Kurt Cobain of Nirvana. Martyr's memoir, translated from German into English, provides a detailed account of the band's experiences and is a valuable document of punk history. Kleenex slash Lilliput's music was often described as unashamedly, primitively brilliant and their live performances were known for their energy and joyousness. The band faced challenges as women in a male-dominated industry but remained defiant and true to themselves. Martyr's memoir sheds light on these experiences and offers a unique perspective on the punk movement. Translator Jen Kayeha, a punk musician herself, worked hard to capture the voice and spirit of Martyr's memoir in her translation. The book also includes contemporaneous interviews and articles that provide additional context and insight into the band's history. Overall, the memoir is a valuable addition to punk literature and a testament to the power of music as a form of liberation and self-expression. Australian couple books 51 back-to-back -back cruises, says it's cheaper than living in a retirement home. Is retiring at sea a sound plan? The Toronto Star. An Australian couple, Marty and Jess Anson, have made headlines after spending nearly 500 days at sea and expressing their desire to continue doing so for the rest of their lives. The couple booked 51 back-to-back -back cruises on the Coral Princess and have stated that they love cruising and see it as a cheaper alternative to being in a retirement home. The idea of retiring at sea is gaining popularity, as the cost of living increases and budget travel becomes more accessible. However, financial and personal considerations should be taken into account before embarking on this lifestyle change. Southern Republicans look to nationalize 2023 governor's races by invoking Biden. The Toronto Star Republican candidates for governor in Kentucky and Mississippi are using President Joe Biden as a key part of their campaigns, despite the fact that he is not on the ballot. In both states, GOP nominees are just as likely to talk about Biden as they are their actual opponents in the general election. The strategy reflects the deepening ideological divides in the U.S. and is a way for candidates to create a mental shortcut for identifying individuals as U.S. or them, said Carrie Archie Russell, an expert on Southern politics at Vanderbilt University. The campaigns in Kentucky and Mississippi could serve as a test for messaging in the 2024 presidential election year, when Biden is expected to run for re-election. That's all for today's news. Let's recap what we've learned. The UK's net zero ambitions will lead to higher electricity bills due to the shortcomings of renewable energy technologies. Pavel Prigazin, the son of Yevgeny Prigazin, has taken over command of the Wagner Group and is negotiating with Moscow on returning the group's fighters to the war in Ukraine. Liz Truss drew huge crowds at the Conservative Party conference, demanding tax cuts and a green light for fracking. The Women's Super League saw impressive debuts from new signings, including Mia Fischel, Jill Ruard, Guys da Silva Ferreira, and Daphne Van Domseler. Renowned Syrian author Khaled Khalifa has died at the age of 59, leaving behind a legacy of novels that explored the history and destruction of his homeland. Colonel Tim Collins argues that Ukraine needs to revise its military tactics and adopt NATO smokescreen tactics and long-range precision strike weapons to be more effective against Russian forces. Sixty conservative MPs have joined Liz Truss's growth group, potentially threatening the government's majority in parliament. Marlene Martyr, guitarist for the Swiss punk band Kleenex slash Lilliput, has released her memoir, offering insight into the band's formation and early tours. An Australian couple has booked 51 back-to-back -back cruises, claiming it's cheaper than living in a retirement home. Is retiring at sea a sound plan? Republican candidates for governor in Kentucky and Mississippi are using President Joe Biden as a key part of their campaigns, despite him not being on the ballot. Now, let's dive into some analysis. The UK's net zero ambitions are undoubtedly admirable, but it seems that there will be a cost to pay, quite literally. As Neil Record points out, the reliance on intermittent renewable energy sources will lead to soaring electricity bills. It's a reminder that transitioning to a greener future requires not only investment in renewable technologies but also careful consideration of the economic impact on households. Moving on to international affairs, Pavel Prigazin's ascent to the leadership of the Wagner Group raises questions about the future of the mercenary group and its involvement in conflicts around the world. His negotiations with Moscow on returning fighters to Ukraine suggest a potentially volatile situation in the region. It's a reminder that proxy wars and private military contractors continue to play a significant role in global conflicts. 
Shifting gears to domestic politics, Liz Truss's popularity at the Conservative Party conference highlights the appeal of tax cuts and profracking policies within the party. However, the low attendance at other speeches raises questions about the overall enthusiasm for the conference. It seems that Truss's message struck a chord with attendees, but the true test will be translating that enthusiasm into meaningful policy changes. In the world of sports, the Women's Super League saw some impressive debuts from new signings. It's great to see the league attracting top talent and delivering exciting matches. The performances of Mia Fischel, Jill Ruard, Guys da Silva Ferreira, and Daphne van Domseler are a testament to the growing quality and competitiveness of women's football. Turning to culture, the passing of Syrian author Khaled Khalifa is a loss for the literary world. His novels provided a powerful and human perspective on the devastating civil war in his homeland. His work served as a reminder of the importance of storytelling in understanding and empathizing with the experiences of others. As for the rest of the news, it's clear that Ukraine needs to reassess its military tactics and seek new strategies to counter Russian forces. The involvement of British military personnel in learning from their Ukrainian counterparts could be a step in the right direction. In UK politics, the growth of Liz Truss's growth group within the Conservative Party could potentially pose a challenge to the government's majority. It will be interesting to see how this plays out in the coming months and what impact it will have on policy decisions. Switching gears to music, Marlene Martyr's memoir offers a valuable insight into the punk movement and the experiences of women in the industry. It's a reminder of the power of music as a form of liberation and self-expression. Moving on to lifestyle, the idea of retiring at sea may sound appealing to some, but it's important to consider the financial and personal implications. While it may be a cheaper alternative to retirement homes, it's crucial to weigh the pros and cons before making such a significant lifestyle change. Finally, in U.S. politics, the use of President Joe Biden as a key campaign issue in the gubernatorial races in Kentucky and Mississippi reflects the deep ideological divides in the country. It's a strategy that aims to create a sense of unity and identity among voters. These campaigns could serve as a testing ground for messaging in the upcoming presidential election year. And that concludes today's news. I hope you found it informative and entertaining. Now, I'd love to hear your thoughts. What do you make of the UK's net zero ambitions and the potential increase in electricity bills? Are you surprised by Liz Truss's popularity at the Conservative Party conference? Do you think retiring at sea is a sound plan? Share your ideas, questions, and opinions, and let's keep the discussion going. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.